Hello friends, this is Seher from Easy Peasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is the fourth step of aerobic respiration. The first step is glycolysis. The second step is pyruvate oxidation. The third step is Krebs cycle and the fourth step is that Krebs cycle enters the electron transport chain. So let's discuss this step in more detail. Now in this picture, as you can see, this is glucose that is converting itself into acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle or TCA cycle. TCA stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle, which is the other name of Krebs cycle. Okay, now from this Krebs cycle, we have two different type of electron carriers that are coming from the cycle and enters the electron transport chain. The first carrier is NADH and the second carrier is FADH2. They are carrying both electrons and H positive ions from them. Now the electron transport chain is present on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. As you can see, this is the inner mitochondrial membrane. And on these membranes, we have some embedded proteins on it, which are going to help in the electron transport chain in order to make ATP. Let's discuss this step in a little bit more detail. Now, as we said, that electron transport chain will be present on the inner membrane of mitochondria. So this is the environment of mitochondria. This is the outer mitochondrial membrane. This is the inner membrane space. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane. And this part is the mitochondrial matrix. Now, as we know that Krebs cycle was present in the mitochondrial matrix like this. And from this Krebs cycle, two electron carriers are going to come out. And that is NADH and FADH2. Let's talk about the first electron carrier that how it is going to perform its function. So this NADH is going to take electrons and hydrogen to the first complex. And this complex is called as complex 1, NADH dehydrogenase. Now what happened here is that NADH will lose protons plus electrons and will convert itself into NAD+. The electrons that it is going to lose here will be taken up by another protein called as ubiquinone. This ubiquinone is a mobile electron carrier. So it will take electron from complex 1 and will take it to the complex 3, like this. Now complex 3 is called as cytochrome C reductase. Now why it is called as cytochrome C reductase? Because it is going to transfer this electron to cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is another electron mobile carrier. So it will take electron from complex 3 and will get reduced. Now the cytochrome C will take this electron from complex 3 and will take it to complex 4. The name of the complex 4 is cytochrome C oxidase because it is going to take electron from cytochrome C and will oxidize cytochrome C. Now this electron will move out of this membrane and will be gained by oxygen. This oxygen with the help of this electron and protons that are present in the matrix will convert itself into water molecule. So the last product that is going to gain electrons is oxygen. That is why oxygen is really important for aerobic respiration because this is the last molecule that is going to gain protons and electrons from electron transport chain. Let's talk about the second electron carrier and that was FADH2. FADH2 was generated when succinate converted itself into fumarate with the help of an enzyme that is called as 
succinate dehydrogenase. In the Krebs cycle, it was mentioned before that succinate dehydrogenase is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So as you can see over here in this picture that this gray protein is basically the succinate dehydrogenase that is helping the conversion of succinate into fumarate. Now in this reaction, as it is the oxidative reaction, it will lose hydrogen and electrons, which will be gained by FAD and convert itself into FADH2. Now this is a cyclic reaction, so fumarate can convert itself back into succinate and FADH2 can convert itself back into FAD by releasing protons and electrons. From complex 2, this electron will be taken up by ubiquinone and it will take this electron from complex 2 to complex 3 that is called as cytochrome C reductase. From here, cytochrome C, that is another mobile electron carrier, will take this electron and will take it to complex 4 that is called as cytochrome C oxidase. From here, this electron will move outward inside the matrix. From there, the oxygen will take help from this electron and proton and convert itself into water molecule. If we look at the complexes that are present on the internal mitochondrial membrane, we can see that complex 1, complex 3, and complex 4 are integral membrane proteins while complex 2 is embedded inside the membrane. So whenever this electron moves from one integral protein to another, it will help the movement of proton from matrix to intermembrane space like this. So in case of NADH, three times the electron moves from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4. And in case of FADH2, it will help two protons to move from complex 3 and complex 4. By this way, the amount of protons increases in the intermembrane space, and the pH will get low due to the high concentration of protons in the intermembrane space. On the other hand, in the mitochondrial matrix, due to the low proton concentration, the pH will be high. Now this will create a concentration gradient. So protons from high concentration will move towards the lower concentration. So it will use an integral protein that is also called as complex 5 or ATP synthase. When these protons will move from high concentration to low concentration, this movement will generate energy and this energy will be used to convert ADP into ATP. Now over here, if we look at NADH, it is going to help three protons to move from complex 1, complex 3, and complex 4. And these three protons, when they go back into the matrix, they will produce three ATP molecules. So one NADH can produce three ATP molecules. In case of FADH2, it will help two protons to move from complex 3 and complex 4. So, one FADH2 can produce two ATP molecules. Now over here, we have two different type of processes. One is the process of electron transport chain that was done from complex 1 to complex 4 and complex 5 is generating ATP due to the process of diffusion. So that process is called as chemiosmosis. Electron transport chain plus chemiosmosis together will be called as oxidative phosphorylation. The oxidation is done in electron transport chain and phosphorylation of ADP into ATP is done in chemiosmosis. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.